morning. We're now going to start the board of directors meeting of Friday, October 20. It's about 8.50. Eh, not too bad. So with that, I'm going to uh, take roll, first of all. Uh, Kika Pukowski is excused. Anthony Alto. Present. Don Takichiapuna is excused. Michelle Chan Boomgrabber. Hi, Michelle. Present. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Natalie Uwasa. Here. Roger Morton is excused. Joe O'Donnell is excused. Ed <laughs> Sniffen is excused. Anthony, no, Arthur Tolentino. Present. Edwin Young. Here. Robert Yu. Here. And the chair is here as well. So with that, we have quorum to begin this meeting. First of all, I'd like to ask if we have any public testimony on any of the agenda items, beginning first with the people who are here present. Any of you here to testify? Nope. Do we have anything on the email? Who's watching our emails? Nobody's online? Okay. So with that, we are um, going on to agenda item number three with this Ethics Commission presentation regarding financial disclosure statements. I also have to go through this again. Anyone here in the audience willing to testify on this specific agenda item? Anyone online to testify? No one online. So with that, please introduce yourselves and do your presentation. And we, we actually did prepare a brief PowerPoint, so perfect. So aloha mai kako. My name is Terry Kili'ipuleole, and I'm an associate legal counsel with the Honolulu Ethics Commission. And here with me today is Eric Irwin, also an associate legal counsel with the Honolulu Ethics. So. First and foremost, just really like to thank you for putting us on the agenda this morning. We're just here for a very brief presentation on mm -hmm. financial disclosures. We made it our really lofty goal for 2024 to, to try to get 100% compliance for all financial disclosure filings. So in hoping to attain that goal, we're actually going to be visiting all boards and commissions. So not just you, we're visiting all boards and commissions to go over this presentation, just as a friendly reminder about financial disclosures. I was Because actually historically, we have proceeded to enforcement uh, against board and commissioners for um, delinquent filings. So we're really hoping to avoid that um, for this upcoming year. So actually, with that being said, um, we'll just jump right into the presentation and we can go to our first slide, uh, the agenda. Very briefly, we'll just go over some FAQs. Uh, most importantly, our due dates. That's the bread and butter of why we're here today. Um, how to submit. We'll have some, hopefully, some great good news about uh, new developments and how to submit and then wrapping it up with penalties. So some general um, you know, FAQs that we receive about financial disclosure specifically for board and commissioners is just first and foremost, are board and commissioner members required to file? Um, yes, you know, as board and commissioners, you're considered city officers. And as the city officers, that's where the requirement um, to file lies. Um, are financial dis and why are they important? really helps with building public trust, transparency, and for the independent filers, it helps going through conflict of interest analysis. The way that we structure the form is to just really help you to identify potential conflicts to avoid throughout the course of your officership. And lastly, as board and commission members, is your financial disclosure uh, confidential? Yes, it is. These are not public filings. They are confidential filings. And then on to the next slide. So very important. <laughs> so there's three very important due dates to be aware of throughout the course of your officership. The first one is that uh, your initial financial disclosure is going to be due 20 days from swearing date. Um, this, the second is annual and ongoing throughout the entire, uh, you know, your active tenure is the due date of January 31st. It's always going to be January 31st for your annual filing. The caveat with this one is that the filing period does begin on January 1st and it'll close on January 31st. And that's because you're filing for the preceding calendar year. So this is one of those situations in which, you know, the early bird is not going to get the worm here. If you were to file in December like of this year, that's going to count for the preceding calendar year. So you really want to make sure you are filing within that um, January 1st through 31st filing period. Um, and that's the one we're really hoping to bring home. And the last one's going to be 10 days uh, prior to leaving office. And then next slide, um, how to submit. So this is for your annual disclosure spe 
specifically because that's the one we're really hoping that everyone's going to file on time this year um, with the 31st uh, deadline. Um, currently, it is uh, you know a, an old er process. It's paper copy submissions. Currently, our website is set up that we do have a, a specific tab for boarding commission members. It's displayed here on the screen on the left. You click on that at the very top. It will take you directly to the financial disclosure form that's applicable for the filing year. You would download that, fill that out, and submit the completed form to us either via email um, or by snail mail to our office at Kapala Mahale. Um, and Hopefully, we have some new exciting news, but Eric will go over about a potential new electronic submission process that will debut. Yeah. Okay. And I'll turn it with that, I'll turn it over to Eric. <laughs> Thanks. Perfect. So, um, you know, as Terry said, I think it's good to remember everything she said because nothing as of today is official. Um, but it looks likely that a lot of this process for financial disclosure, not a lot, in fact, all of the process will actually move online. So in, if this system goes live, which it seems likely on January 1st of next year, uh, you will no longer have the option to print off that form and mail it to us or email it. So you will be required to go through this electronic process. So pre presuming this goes forward, the, the thing to remember is you have to do it through the uh, city and county site, hnl.info. And if you go in there, uh, it's good if you want to get a head start to actually make an account, remember your password, create a username. And from there, uh, when it goes live, or if it goes live on the first, you'll be able to file it in, in almost like a turbo tax system. So you'll be able to do everything online, um, put it in there. It'll check your data in the sense that if you leave something blank that needs to be filled out, it'll prompt you to fill that out. So hopefully it'll be a smoother thing, smoother process. Um, you know, but we also understand that change can be difficult at times. So if at all you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to either your board liaison or to our office because um, we'll be able to direct you through this. And also one other thing I want to add is as this gets closer and as it gets more solid, uh, we do plan to have a step by step guide with pictures that we will distribute to all the boards and commissions. And so hopefully that'll make this process smoother. But again, um, as always, we're always available for questions and guidance. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. But we'll go to the next one. All right, so I'm, you know, I don't really want to spend too much time on this one. This is, these are the penalties. And as Terry mentioned earlier, the only people we have actually enforced against have been board and commission members. And, and that's unfortunate. We don't like to do that because we, also, we recognize you guys are largely volunteering your time. You guys are doing a service for the community and we don't like to do that. But that said, um, for the first time, uh, you do not file a financial disclosure on time. If you don't uh, file that disclosure, once we give you a notice of violation within 10 days, it's a smaller fine. It's $100 for your first time. If you do it two years in a row, it's 200 But if you wait until 30 days after receiving that notice, the fines could climb up to $5,000. And so it could become fairly substantial. Uh, the criminal penalty is on there. We put it on there because it does exist. Uh, we have never enforced that. so. It's a possibility, but it's a slim possibility. It's more the first part there. But so please keep in mind uh, this could happen, and we hope to never see any of you. <laughs> that. Um, but that's that for that slide, and we'll go to the next one. And that is it. So what we like to highlight on this slide, and we'll do also a little plug for other services we have. But um, not only questions about financial disclosures, not only questions um, about how to fill things out. But we handle everything from conflicts of interest questions you may have, other ethics questions you may have. And if you have those questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. If you send that to us, the more information you send us, and if there's a due date that you guys need it by, put that in there. And we can usually accommodate that. We've had questions two hours before meetings before about conflicts, and we've been able to respond. So please don't hesitate to use us. We are a resource. We're free. It's all confidential. Yeah, confidential. Yeah, and that's a big part, but it's either call or email. And um, with that, I don't know, Terry, do you have anything else to add? No, that's all. Just January 31st. <laughs> please remember that deadline. And like Eric said, any issues with the new process, hoping that, that, you know, that does actually unroll, um, then please reach out to us at any time for, for questions and assistance with that filing to meet the filing deadline. No question is too small or an, an inconvenience by any means. So please reach out. <laughs> Thank you, members. Do you have any questions? Art, do you have any questions? Anybody virtually have any questions? And yes, sure, members? I do. Uh, I'm just making Did somebody say something yeah, now you? you? <laughs> yes. January 31st. January 31st. Perfect. Thanks.
Yes, Any, Chair, I have a question. Yes, Natalie. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned that the forms are confidential, but I'm, um, I've am i seen uh, disclosure statements publicly um, published. And so I'm just wondering, is that only for elected officials? Is there a distinction between boards and commissions and elected officials? Uh, yes, we do have a distinction. So um, various positions with, within the city do, are actually going to be public for boards and commissions. Um, they're an exception to that public filing and also other uh, various exempt positions that are required to file. Those are held confidentially as well. But yeah, the more public positions and higher level officials of the city that those do become public. Okay, thank you. And then just one more comment. Um, I had asked the Ethics Commission for advice regarding a confidential or a, a financial disclosure statement for appointees. And I was told by the Ethics Commission that state appointees are not required to file disclosure statements. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Thank you. Can I, can anybody else, can I ask you a question? You know the penalties? Is that a penalty that's assessed against all employees of the city for that are required to file? In other words, if an elected official um, fails to file, uh, they can face up to $5,000 fine for failure to file within 30 days, and they could face a criminal penalty of $2,000 imprisonment of not more than one year or both. Yeah. Yes, those would be enforced. If, but historically, we have had... Um, like last year, I can say um, with certainty that we've had 100% compliance on the employee and officer side. It was always the boards and commissions that we've had a little bit of trouble with. So the the, the file the fines appear to be just filing related mm -hmm. versus whether or not the file. I mean, the form is filed oh, properly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is that am I reading this correctly? Uh, yes. Yeah. So specific for this presentation, we just wanted to focus on the filing. But if there were to ever be any potential allegations of you know of lying on the yeah. form, for example, it, yeah, exactly, and that could be that could trigger a different process for us, like investigative and other potential penalties if it's a violation of our standards of conduct if we were to find that so is this penalty and fines uh it, you say city statute so a board and commissioner from the state doesn't face the same kind of no, fine structure no we don't have jurisdiction over no the, no i understand state, that yeah. but the state arguably might have jurisdiction over all counties if they made it a general law so are you saying that this is just the city and county this is just for us and specifically with the ethics commission so that would be our jurisdiction and those are the penalties that we would seek enforcement of before our commission okay any other questions members but you feel that by january 1st we should be able there will be an interactive PDF. <laughs> so well, we've been we've been told that it's going to go live on the, on the first, and and if that does happen, we will, like I said, we'll have a guide that we'll we'll distribute yeah. and step by step with. You. And D DIT is actually they're the owner of the H and L um, site, and they're the ones who are actively working on trying to get this out. So it's um, they they've made assurances, although we can't, we don't want to make uh, further promises, but they've made assurances that they're very confident that on January first the. And they the system does exist. I played yeah. around with it, so it is in. It, it yeah, is they in. seem to be in more of those final, final kind of staging process of making sure things run smoothly. So hope I think it's very promising that it will it will be um, released on January live on January first. So with this is well, welcome Roger, but I'm just curious. <laughs> Roger Morton files as a uh, as a director of the City and County of Honolulu. Does he have to also file then as a, a board and commissioner? We do. We yeah. We do have the dual filings. Yes, yeah. and, and the idea behind oh, that is gosh. just yeah. It's just because like there's different conflicts, and so like like Terry said earlier, it helps you flag different conflicts in different positions. And so that's just, that's kind of the theory behind it. So at least for our ex official members uh, who are also filing under other other the other hats, will also must know that they got to file again yeah. as a that's part of this outreach is we're really trying to hit, hit it as much as possible and, and answer any questions that people have. So we, we appreciate this conversation too. And even follow, you know, as the as the due date approaches beyond this presentation, we will send out. Generally, we do send out reminders as the, the due date does approach. So hopefully, that would also help. And if you have question, if those emails kind of trigger any questions, too, please feel free to reach out. But we do have at least. An, uh, an email that we will send reminder in the fall and then right, right before the deadline as well too. Um, 
And if we see that there's if there is a filing, if we know that you know a director and hold multiple positions, and we see one filing, we usually do try to reach out if we notice that in another position there hasn't been one filed. So we 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 are uh, in January. We have a very active reviewing process um, where we're actively going through all the financial disclosures that we do receive to be able to reach out um, and send those reminders, or if we have questions about the filings themselves. Do you have any questions, Roger? I think I do three. Yeah. <laughs> you do three filings? <laughs> for city uh, officer, one for board member, and one for UMPO. Oh, okay. That's a state one. Yeah. So you're busy in January and, with your filings. This is electronic as well, right? All online. Yeah, I mean, they're, so, they're, they're, they're a pain, but they're not too onerous, really. They're pretty easy to, they take about 20 minutes to fill out. And, yeah. The, the only thing that I always get irritated by is the signature. Oh, so are you going to let us slash s slash, or do we have to actually try to? With the within, I, there should be the electronic will, signature. Submit. Yeah, I'm not sure what the, the, the new system looks like, but it will be. It should be easier. Then. Yeah, it should be all, all electronic. And they're hoping to have some prompts in there where right. uh, you would just. You know, if you don't know the information, it, it'll allow you to click on something, like even potentially for your tax, tax map key and all of that, that it'll it'll be able to populate it for you if you could put some just preliminary information. So hopefully it'll be a more intuitive and helpful. This one's a quick plug, though, is, is I know that some sometimes the barrier we have are just they don't have the information from past filings, like a TMK number or something like that. Um, we do actually, we have all the old filings, so this does come up because this system won't autofill the first year. There's no information in it. So if you do have that in the functionality that Terry was talking about, auto, um, just pulling it from the TMK side is inactive, give us a call and we can get you an old copy of your financial disclosure so that you can just transfer that uh, I see. And, then, and after that, if we sit on the board after that, we would be able, it will auto-file for should. us. Yeah. That's the theory. That's the theory. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the what, theory. Yeah. <laughs> but like we said, I don't want to promise anything. Yeah. yeah. And so, and like Eric did say, as soon as we get more concrete uh, information about the site, we will disseminate that information as soon as we get it. So the handouts, um, any instructional sheets, we'll make sure to get that to you as, as soon as we as soon as we receive them. But those are actually active, actively being worked on as well. So hopefully <laughs> there'll be a lot of tools to make it a, a more seamless transition. Uh, uh, personal, how many attorneys do you have now at the Ethics Commission? Oh, we have four. Oh, wow. So half here today. Our bosses. So is uh, Laurie Wong still there? Yes, yeah, she is. She's not that anymore. She's Laurie Wong something, right? Nowinski, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Give her my best. Okay. We will. Thank you. Anything else, members? If not, thank you very much. Anybody else up there? No? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so you. much for your time. Okay, we're moving. Huh? Okay. <laughs> We'll put that on the agenda in January. <laughs> Thank you. So that's a request that we'll put down. Uh, request from board member on the January agenda. Reminder to file. Okay. Now we'll move on to agenda item number four, which is the executive director and CEO's update. Before we move on that, uh, is there anyone here wishing to testify on agenda item number four? Any online? Any online? Not, okay, no. Laurie, it's yours. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chad, if you could, um, thank you. So. We went ahead and put together this schedule. It's online, especially for you, Michelle. I hope you can see it. Um, we really just need to focus on the bottom six lines. It's in green. And this is what the proposed schedule is from FTA. So all the environmental is done, except for that one green and mid sheet that we're still in the five, five month um, posting. And that should be done in January. But if you focus it on the bottom six line items, so right now the FFGA amendment is still with the administrator, FTA administrator, and she's planning on sending it up to the secretary's office end of this month. And he has 30 days to review and approve. At that point, it is still confidential, but they are willing to release a draft to the pig, the hard pig, to start reviewing. 
After uh, secretary's 30 days, then it goes to congressional notification. So that would be the month of December. At that point, it's public. Um, so the the tight schedule is, and I, and I discussed it with Chair because I need her guidance, is to have the board review and approve before it goes to city council. And I did get confirmation from council chair that he's willing to forego a committee and just approve it at full council on December 6th. But if you can see, that's a really, really tight schedule. And the goal of FTA is to have a signing ceremony at the end of December, similar to the original FFGA. So it would be, of course, board, chair, myself, mayor, um, council chair, and I think core. I think core also has to sign it and the secretary, um, not the secretary, the administrator. Um, as we get closer, FTA has says whether it makes more sense for her to fly here or us to fly to D.C. It makes more sense for her to <laughs> fly here economically, but we'll see. Um, so that's Michelle. I'm not sure, Michelle, if you can see the, the posting. So sorry for the late because um, after you made your comments at the Tuesday when we put this schedule together so that we could share it um, physically to you folks today. Yeah, may I, may I make a comment? Yes, yes. Michelle. Yeah, um, I'm actually pleased that we were able to like um, put down a little bit more detail in terms of what we think is going to happen and put some emphasis on it. And so I, I'm actually like quite happy, Laurie, with the um, with the schedule. And it is a very tight schedule, but we will all work towards getting it there. And I think as we're getting to the end, you know, I think it's um, it's the steps that need to be taken. And, you know, I was more harping on it was more like every kind of time we like looked at it, it was like it was slipping out and there was something else that had to get done. So as we're getting to the end, I think we're all learning. Right. What has to get done. And and I'm. I left the committee meetings earlier this week thinking, oh, man, it's not even going to get done by January, right? But um, I think this accelerated or this um, this new schedule, uh, even though the timeline is quite tight, I think that, that um, yeah, I, I'm happy with it closing, trying to close by the end of the year. So I don't have any comments other than thank you for showing us this schedule. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. And um, I don't think I'm violating anything, but uh, Michelle is on the pig. Yeah. So we do have the, we, so those who are on the pig will be the, we've, we'll be, I guess, soliciting a date for them sometime after the third. Correct, Dan? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So any other questions or comments, members? Chair? Yes, <clears throat> Anthony. This may not be the time, <clears throat> excuse me, but as chair of the extensions pig, looking at the possibility of extending the system that we're building at the moment, um, one qu question, one rather large question raises its head, which is, is it worth having FTA money? And I wouldn't mind seeing some kind of an analysis at some point as to what the costs of the FTA impose rules, regulations, and oversight has been compared to the amount of money that they've contributed to the project. Because it makes no sense to work with the feds if doing so costs us money instead of bringing money, ex extra money in. So the only thing is, I suspect that such analysis might take a fair bit of time. I think you've asked that, or maybe not you, but the board has asked that in the past, and I think Nate mention and I, he can speak for himself but i think that's very challenging analysis to be done i'm not disagreeing that it does cost quite a bit to have fta funds but to separate it out i think that would be very challenging and okay <laughs> okay yeah, no, i mean it's all right uh, i we could sit right. on it because i think i think we're we're exceeding this the, the position yeah. but what maybe what we can do anthony is you can write a formal request right and it, it's not urgent yeah. because we're not planning on any of this right now, of right. course. But but it is can, a, it is a very pertinent point right. because you know it's come up time and time again. And you can also take it up in your pig. Right. But thank you. Thanks, we'll, we'll make it either a formal request of some kind or take it up in his pig. 
Yes, Roger. If there were such analysis done, it would be helpful to know the experience of other cities that have decided to use local money, if any. I don't think there's any other city or, well, state in the nation that has a GET. Yeah. But they still have local monies. Yeah, but not like the GET. No. I mean, if if you're looking for a funding source, that's... Uh, I think I think everybody is tight for money. Uh, and, and I'm just saying that um, it would be interesting to determine uh, how many cities, if any, had chosen to go a route of foregoing, uh, you know, federal money. Right. I agree. There may be some. Right. But, um, right. And at the 30,000 foot level, obviously, we should be levying, lobbying for the federal government to change its formula so that more money goes to public transit instead of roads. Well, and I think that's the other issue is that at 15 percent uh, federal share, you're 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 right on with is that worth it? Uh, but that's not to say that future extensions would be 15 percent. Right. They might be 40 percent or they might be uh, larger. There might be 50 percent uh, from your lips to God's ears. So, I mean, that that's, uh, you know, they, we're not. The, the, you know, we can, the, the federal government legally can go all the way up to 80%, but they don't. <laughs> uh, they did one long time ago. Long time ago they did, but they don't now. Uh, okay, guys, we're off topic. Okay. Thank all you. Right. All right. Come back yes. Uh, FTA quarterly debrief, Laurie, yes. is your next topic. Yes. Thank you, Chair. It was very, actually, very brief <laughs> meeting. FTA did fly in here. It was one day, and the, the feedback from Region 9 was they're very pleased with the progress that has been going on. They're pleased with how the meetings were held, very tight, concise, and um, it was very positive. And I think they went out into the field to see the construction, how it's ongoing for AGS and CC, um, CCUR. And again, they're just very, very positive feedback. Um, the APTA Expo, um, so I spoke at the Expo last week. It was in Florida. My first time attending something that huge, it was about 11,000 attendees. Matt Scanlon, Director of um, Design and Construction, attended with me, and actually so did Roger and Robert. As I mentioned before, Roger is like my big brother showing me around and, and introducing me to different people. And I have to say, Matt always shared this with me, that the industry, all eyes are on us. Everyone is very interested, but very supportive. So as even Matt was introducing me around the, 100% the reaction is, oh my God, congratulations to you folks. We're so, we're so pleased. Um, Chair, I did want to share with you, in that expo, there is a, an award ceremony. And right now, in fact, the APTA chair is actually a board member. And I didn't realize how much the, the boards were so active in APTA. So I know, I know it's later on in the agenda on revolution, but I think you folks really should look at attending APTA and um, it would it would be it would be really terrific if um, the agencies that were um, given the awards just the board and the administration are just working hand in hand and just accomplishing so much so it would be great if one day we're we're on that stage but that's all I have for for my uh, update chair any other any questions or comments okay Roger we were on the stage twice. <laughs> the awards? Yeah. This year? Not this year. Oh, okay. okay. Historically. Historically. Okay. Oh, yeah. I've been there. Yeah. You came. I, I've come. Yeah. I, I've gone. This is when uh, James Cowan was head of the, the bus, and they won Best Bus in Americans twice. And I went twice. And uh, I don't know if any of you know who James Cowan is, but. Of course, Roger does, and Robert was also very close. I used to call him JC, and he was uh, he did port he did the, uh, the basically TriMet, but before that he was head of the uh, the the Golden Gate Authority, which meant that he he controlled everything that went over under the ferries, everything under the Golden Gate. And then, of course, he was, was he Western Region of United Airlines, too? Well, he was Greyhound Lines for a long time, and yeah. Greyhound Korea. He set up uh, Yes, Greyhound right. He's Lines an honorary citizen of Korea, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Honorary citizen. Right. And he was the director of operations for United Airlines. That's right. Yeah. And then he was in that plane crash. 
Yeah. Remember when they, the, and because he said he was watching, they stopped doing it. They used to let you watch the takeoff of the jets. And then they stopped it after that plane crash because they literally saw the plane go this way. But yeah, but he was a very amazing person and a strong advocate of rail, actually. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, yeah, we have gone. I mean, you guys have gone. I've been there uh, when they won that award twice and it was and jc won one before that and that was for it was the best administrator award for uh, from apta or something well, like that. i got that from governing magazine oh govern that's right it was from governing magazine because right. young andrew young received one too at the same time that he did but it was for running um trimet i think it was yeah so anyway anything else anyone up there any questions me Yes. Me. Okay. Yeah. Um. She looks like she's on a bike. <laughs> Where did you? You were in a car. Where are you now? <laughs> I'm at Queens. I'm at Queens. Oh, My oh, mom has a procedure today. Yeah. yeah. Um. I, I, Laurie, this is. I, I'm so glad you went. I'm so glad that that you were able to think positively about this and think about like how you know kind of we're we're up next and um and everybody's looking to Hawaii. And this is kind of the, the discussion that we had a little bit earlier that sometimes the investment that we make in our people with training or travel is really well worth it. You have to be very you know careful about it and pick your pick your battles. But um, the the camaraderie in the rail community, from what I understand, is pretty tight. So getting people to want to come here, understanding who your partners are, learning, you know, them learning from us, us learning from them. Um, I'm really glad you got, had a good time. And this is kind of like, you know, what we had discussed about, like, you know, setting aside just a little bit of money so that, you know, both the board, a member, if, if one would be um, wanted to go, um, as well as uh, key employees, including yourself, going to these conferences. It's, you know, it's really hard to pull yourself away, but it's really important to do that as well. So thank you for letting me um, say my piece. Michelle. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Just, yes. Just a quick one. I'm just wondering, you said that there was all eyes were on, were on us. Is that because we're an automated system? What is it that's attracting so much interest? I think it's, that's part of it because we are seem to be cutting edge technology. We have the platform gates were interesting to a lot of people and the autonomous, but just our history, just our history that we were like the poster child of what not to do. And it's turned around and people are, what, what Matt has explained to me, any positivity within any agency, it just lifts up the industry as a whole. So people were rooting for us. And when, when we opened up that first segment, it was, they just feel for us, just, just so proud of us accomplishing that. Any, anyone else? Art, do you have something? Your mic's on. We just want us to hear you eat. <laughs> okay. So with that, uh, members, we're going to move on to agenda item number five, which are the committee reports. Before I go there, is there anyone here who wishes to testify or give comments on agenda item number five, committee reports? Anyone online? No one? So let's begin. The first report is the October 17, 2023 Finance Committee Report. Robert. Good morning, Chair, um, members. Your um, committee on finance um, reviewed three items at the um, during the October 17th meeting. The, um, two of those items did not require any um, committee action, and uh, we reviewed this uh, cash flow report for um, the year today to September, and also the annual cash flow. And we also um, took a look at the fiscal year 25 operating and capital budgets. And for that item, it will be an action item at the during the next um, finance committee meeting. The action that we took with in the committee was for the fiscal year 2024 capital budget amendment. Um, when the fiscal year 24 capital budget was passed, it did not specifically appropriate an amount for HART's um, capitalized labor costs. And that um, amount is 
$1.7 million. And um, so the committee took action and uh, passed the amendment to um, appropriate $15.7 million for HART's um, uh, labor costs in the capital budget. And we will, we need the board to approve a resolution, but we will ask the board at the next board meeting to approve the re to approve the res resolution. Okay. And that concludes my report, Chair. Any questions or comments, members? Chair. Okay. Yes. Just okay. just for the sake of those um, tuning in for for the public, um, the fifteen. Point seven. seven million is not a, a, a net increase to our budget. It's a paper transfer, correct? Uh, that's correct. It's um, it, it's a transfer from another budget line item. So there's no additional money that we are asking. Any other questions or comments? I have one comment, and Laurie, I think this is directed more at uh, at you, you and your staff. Um, I remember, I mean, I noticed during the meeting, uh, committee, the finance committee meeting, and I'm not a member of the committee, so I did not interject at that time. But since it's going to come up again, I thought that the operations and the capital budget is really something that's presented by your staff, because I think the charter says you present that. If I recall correctly, for some reason, Robert was doing the presentation on that, and I think it should have been you guys. And I think usually you folks have some sort of a, um, whether you want to call it a, the, the, those things, you know, dashboard, whatever you want to call it. I think you usually present something, and I didn't see that. But I didn't know whether that was a decision made between you and your staff and Robert but I think this still needs one more time with Robert's committee. And if it's not something that Robert has decided to do, I think it, the onus is on you guys to present that to the committee. And everyone who was not here or may not have heard it, what happens with this budget is that it goes from the directly from the finance committee to the mayor's office by December 1st. The mayor then transmits that, he cannot touch it. He then trans under the charter, he can't touch it. It then transfers from him to city council. City council does whatever it may want to do. Then it comes back to the heart board. It's at the, that time that the heart board takes action because the board can decide whether we're gonna agree or disagree and change the budget. So the budget is purely within the board. So uh, that's why it's not, it, though it was agenda item number eight, we're deferring that because of the fact that we don't take action on it. It goes directly from finance to the mayor. So in light of that, could you and Robert decide, because I think it's, I think it's on you guys to present to the committee, not the committee to explain what, what's going on with your capital and operating. Yes, we'll do chair. Okay. Yep. Unless you want to do it, Robert. <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you. you. So with that, we're going to move on to the next one. Um, I don't think you want to do it, huh, Michelle? I'm going to defer to Kika Gets here. You want to do Kika's report? Oh, no. I'll, let's defer until Kika gets here. Okay. I'm going to defer that to Kika Gets. Kika is coming. He has another engagement in the morning, but he will be here. And I'll, at that time, we'll ask him to do um, committee report. Uh, on the October 17th Project Oversight Committee. So I'm deferring that to later on in the agenda. Number C, October 17, 2023, Government Affairs Legal Matters Committee, Anthony. Chair, um, there was only one item on our agenda, which was the STG change order settlement issue, and that has been deferred. So the committee only met to see if there was any online testimony, there being none, we adjourned. Thank you. And agenda item number D, October 17, 2023. That's the Human Resources Committee, and that's you, Michelle. Yes, good morning, Chair. Um, good morning. We had our Human Resources Committee uh, on Tuesday, October 17, and the, the two major items we covered was um, reviewing the current 
org chart that we have, as well as the draft proposed 2024 org chart, um, there was a lot of comments because the colors changed. So we're going to change the colors to try to make them consistent so that we can compare. But the reason why we started early this year is because it took us several months into 2023 to get the org chart approved. So we're going to we're going to try to be proactive this year. And I think we've made a good start on it. So we'll, we'll review it again next month and hopefully be able to um, get it to the board first thing um, in January. January. Uh, the second thing was the vacancies in hiring, and I'm hoping that we have a, a chart that shows the critical vacancies that we can show. Is that available, Lori? Sorry, um, Chair, you were asking for that table with the priorities. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. We don't. I don't have it with me to be able to post right now. But that table that we presented at the committee. My understanding, I stepped out, but my understanding, you want to add one more column to add how long we've been trying to recruit for that. So that will be done by, um, we need to post by next week, Thursday or Friday for your next committee meeting. Okay. Um, my suggestion um, to the chair of the um, the board is that because there are, uh, you know, almost a dozen critical vacancies um, that we we continue to track that and maybe we just show that one table at the board meeting so starting with maybe next month's board meeting after the committee meetings my suggestion is that that we kind of start tracking that so that 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 maybe um, part doesn't feel like they have to wait as long until we look for you know maybe a consultant or or, or you know look for um, other means or incentives to, to hire the government employees. So, you know, that's my question to the board is whether they would would like to see that at the meeting. So Michelle, would, uh, would it um, satisfy what you're asking if we put it as part of the executive director and CEO's update on a monthly basis so that she yeah, gets that, a report? That, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Lori, would you be okay with that? Just showing that Great. one chart? Yeah. Good yeah. idea. Why don't we do it that way? And I think that satisfies what you're raising. And I think it's very important for us to see where their critical positions are and how far we are from filling them. So, yeah. Right. Thank yeah. you. Why it's not only just that? how... Okay, thank you. It's not just how 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 long they've been open. It's you know taking additional actions that the board may be able to assist with, or you know we talked about um, some pay exceptions, for example, um, and the and the board has a role in pay exceptions. Um, the last item that we had, which was heart succession planning, we deferred until next month, and um, what we did was we actually put heart in control of all of the initial succession planning. So we'll review that next month, and that was deferred. Um, and that was the end of the uh, the meeting. There was no public testimony. Okay. Thank you. Any questions, members? Anyone have any questions? If not, thank you very much, Michelle. And I guess whatever you need to be posted before your next board meeting, can you be sure to be in contact with Laurie so we can have it and satisfy our posting requirements? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to move on to agenda item number six, which follow-up board member requests made at the September 15, 2023 board meeting, board of directors meeting. First of all, is there anyone here wishing to testify on agenda item number six? Any online? None. So this is uh, identified council revenues, current GET, TAT growth rate, which is you, Rick. I'll say a few words here to see if, um, okay. if Rick needs to come up. But at the last meeting, I believe it was you, uh, Robert, that asked, okay, what is the current um, Council of Revenues rate? So um, Rick went back to go take a look at what it is and then did a summary. So I did email it out to you folks. The GET, if you look at on the, the next page, um, please, Chad, mm -hmm. on the GET, it, it ranges, it, it goes 10.8% for FY23 down to 4.5%. Then six, three point five. Um, I, we didn't do an average, but it's it's pretty low. It goes down to two point nine, two point six. The TAT for FY twenty three was seventeen percent, went down to one, the negative two, five, four, and four. So we sent that over to you folks to see if you had uh, any questions or if this satisfied your your re request, uh, Robert. If, if I may, I think I also weighed in on this, okay. and I, I just want to know, uh, and it may, have been Roger, uh, it may have been Robert's request that we do council on revenues, but 
my understanding on council and revenues is that you really it's like it's like the state's budgeting you do pay attention to the first two years but the years after that you basically ignore because they do whatever they want with it and robert probably knows better because robert is the one who worked with this what i wanted to see was the difference between our projections and what the actuals were as they were coming in and what we thought the future growth was going to be and and we're going to look at whether the estimates were correct that's my is it my, my interest, not council on revenues, because I know that council on revenues after the second year is usually worthless. I mean, if they just stay. And we've had testimony that has said to us before, ignore council on revenues after the second year. It's like the, the state does this financial plan uh, when they do their budget. And I mean, the legislature does. You, you, you don't pay any attention to it after that because it's whatever they put in. Robert, do you want to say anything on that? Um, no, no I, I think you said it very well. And my only comment was, I think um, the conversation the last time was, well, how do we determine the um, projection for GET and TAT? And I think um, Hart met with the Department of Tax um, to get information on your projection. And I think the discussion you know, um, wrap around, well, what other sources are out there for you to consider or for you to be able to um, speak to, to come up with reasonable projections going forward? And I, I, I know I mentioned, well, you know, um, a lot of time people could use the Council on Revenues projection because that's for state budgeting is constitutionally required, right? So, and, um, and I think there's also recommendation that if you want to, you could talk to DBED. I know state economist Eugene Tian works for DBED, and he may be a good source of information because they do a lot of surveys, um, you know, with respect to the economy and the visitor industry and whatnot. So, yes, that, that's pretty much yeah, the, the gist. First, of it's the it. two years because they, they budget biennium. So it's the two years, and after that, it's it's just like the legislature. When we, when when they come up with our budget, it's the the biennium that's before us, and then of course there's a supplemental second year. But after that, it's whatever <laughs> looks like you'll balance out. <laughs> but there is no science to the outer numbers. So that's why when I saw this, I said, no, this isn't what I remember wanting because this is. I mean, at this point, of course, it'll always be low. And it's the same thing when if you looked at Act 1, Act 1 was predicated on a GET increase of only 3%. That was calculated into Act 1. And so, and the TAT was calculated, do you remember what it was, Roger, Robert? The TAT and Act 1, was it 8? I thought it was between 8 to 10%. Yeah, T is 8%. Yeah. So, you know, but th those were just numbers that we created just to get, get it in the out years. But, yeah, so in any event, that's what I'd like to see today is what is it that we said? And I think we were, we were doing after the recovery plan 5.8, if I'm correct, correct, 5.8 GT. And I forget what, what we were doing on the TAT. But anyway, I'd like to see how the actuals were and how it, how we predicted and the actuals and what it looks like to the future. That's what I'd like to see, if you could redo that chart. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other comments? Uh, yeah, Chair, this is Natalie. Yeah. Yes, Natalie. I'd just like to reiterate that I'm still very concerned about the projections that have been used. Uh, in the recovery plan, we have 5.83%. And I went through my calculations using the same process that the HART staff did for the recovery plan. I included 2022 and using 2022, so 2010 through um, 2022, it's 4.66 percent using the compound annual growth rate. And then I also did an average um, increase um, for the last 10 years, which is 4.4 percent. So I think we're way over on our revenue projections. I'm very concerned about this, and we have to remember that um, you know in some years there have actually been decreases in the amount of GT that rail has gotten, and I'm talking about on a cash flow basis. 
So I just wanted to um, mention that again, I'm just concerned about the revenue projections that we've already put into place. Thank you. I think if you could send us, Nally, your projections, I'd like to see that in comparison to what I'm asking Rick to do in terms of the futures to where we are, because GET went up substantially this past year. What What is it actually, Rick, is it like 11%? Uh, that ballpark. Yeah. yeah, it's about 11% actually that we, what we receive. So it's a, there is no tax like general excise tax. That's why we're the only one in the nation that has it. But yeah, if you would send us that and then we can compare it with um, what Rick will give us in the next update and we can look at the both of them. Thank you, Natalie. Sure. Anyone else? If not, thank you very much. So now we move to... Um, Agenda item number seven, fiscal year 2024, capital budget allocation amendment for city center utilities relocations for, I think it's 4E, right? 4-electrical. This is Nate. Any comments or any testimony from anyone in the audience? Anyone online? Nope. Nate, all yours. All right. Thank you, Board, Thank you, Chair, Nate Maddox, our Project Director. So we are making a request to reallocate fiscal year 2024 budget um, reallocation for CCUR for electrical, like you like you talked about. So we have budget allocation in there for CCGS was the majority of it. Um, obviously, we have not used that, and so <clears throat> we originally wanted to pursue four electrical as a change order like we did three electrical um weren't able to pursue that for a variety of reasons so now we're asking for a budget allocation because we are currently out for procurement um the expected award of that contract is going to be uh end of this month or middle of next month depending on how the last few weeks play out in the procurement so that is the request and that we're asking for approval thank you before we go any further um, Robert, did, did we discuss this in your finance committee? Uh, it's, it's familiar because I think originally they did a change order on the Calucho one, but for some reason on the NAN section, the NAN didn't have a subcontractor who could do this was there something like that. So that you have to do a separate procurement on this it, it, but it's similar to the Kalucha one but this one is for nan and nan doesn't have a subcontractor so it can't be a change order so it's a totally separate procurement request is that am i recalling this correctly you are recalling that correctly and in addition to uh it is the price we got from nan related to the work that that also made us deviate from wanting to pursue that as a change order it was we found very quickly that the most cost-effective way to get this work done was to procure it, not go through NAN. Do you uh, it was presented in the POC committee. Oh, it was presented in the POC committee, committee. not yes. finance. Because it's really not a, it's not a change order issue. It's a new procurement issue. Okay. Any this, question? Go ahead. Sorry, this is to pull the cables through the work that that's that's right. Right. Yeah. along Dillingham. Absolutely. And uh, this, again, is a paper transfer right this is not net new money correct absolutely right. any other questions i thought this is new money well it's new money and that is not part of the land contract yeah it, it was not never part of allocated it is no impact to the estimate at completion the recovery right. plan budget yeah. right yeah. that's different than that new money because yeah. technically it's it's part of the budgeted amount but it hasn't been it hasn't been awarded in the past it's not like a change order Correct. So, just so that we're clear, so this is new money, but within the EAC. Yes. Any questions from anyone? Where's the, where's the money uh, shifting from? It's in CCR right now. If you look at the cash flow, it's in DBB 511. So, in, that line item includes the electrical work as well. I think it's built into the NAN. I think it's built into DB 511, that CPP. I think it's 511.2, because 511.1 CCR1. Right. Yeah. So just a question, Nate. Um, why does the board need to even here approve the amendment? Because it's um, the CCUR is already part of the CPP, right? 
And that CPP does not, um, it's not exclusive to NAN. It just really any work under that CPP. That was Kika's comment too. He's like, I don't think you folks need yeah. to bring this to the board, but we, we, we thought we did. So maybe going forward, we will, we'll check with you folks first. But he said the same thing in his committee that I don't think you needed to bring this forward. Okay. We did. I think the, you know, we wanted to ensure that we were coordinated with the board that we just changed direction, you know, not pursuing the change order. So we wanted to circle back, make sure everyone was on board with it. Yeah. How okay. much was it? It is the estimate out there is 75 to a hundred million. Yeah. It's not small change. It's not. And I, I give that range because there's some there's some strategy there because the way the work works right now is that NAN does the infrastructure, this 4E contractor comes in, pulls the cable, then NAN comes back and does some of the finished work, landscaping, curb, gutter, sidewalks. Um, it would be best for us if we could just get NAN completely out of here and have this contractor actually do the curb, gutter, sidewalk, and finish work. So there's a little bit of scope going to go from the NAM contract, most likely to this contract, if we get good pricing for it. So you're asking that they do actually that part. So we would have to be a deduct on NANs. Yeah. So we would deduct the NANs. Potentially. 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 But if I recall correctly, when you did the NAN contract, you did not include this anyway. Correct. Yeah, that would be work outside of the specialty work. Um, it would be the work like roadway improvement work, sidewalks, curb gutter. Wait, so, so Nate, if this is not already included in the NAN contract, right? You said, right. Then you just mentioned that you will take it out from the NAN contract. So how it potentially could be some overlap of work items that happen at the end of the contract. Okay. So at the 75 to a hundred million dollars, and that is cover under the CPP 511. Yes. In the EAC. Yes. Okay. The reason, the reason you would uh, consider no, adding it in is basically just logistical. They already have the people on the street, and it's more efficient to do that than demobilize and bring in another crew. That's exactly right. Yeah. But that's not on the pulling of the cables. That's on the the, the, gubble, the gutters and all of that other stuff at the end. Yeah, right. I think ninety percent of this work will be guaranteed work for the uh, for CCR for E contractor. Right. Because all of it's the cable, the pole erection, you know, the true work, um, and then the scope that's in flux is just a little bit at the end. Whether schedules align and work out, where Nan's in a position to come back. Most likely, it's best to just cut them loose so we don't have that risk, finish it out, move on. But as a deduct change order, it would come before the board. Absolutely. Any change in scope right. would, yeah. Right. Okay. But it really depends on pricing we get back and mostly the schedule over the next two years that NAN performs to. Okay. Any other questions? If not, thank you. Thank you, Nate. Thank you. So we are on uh, agenda item number eight, which is going to be deferred because that doesn't come before us until the council acts and it goes back to Robert's committee. Then we're going to do agenda item number nine, which is potential travel by board members to upcoming revolution impact conference. Uh, members, we have a, um, a flyer that's been attached to, uh, well, first before going to, is anyone here to testify on agenda item number nine? Any online and agenda nine? Okay, so members, um, in your... In your folder is the uh, schedule of this conference. And uh, you know, Laurie just told us about APTA. This is one that's, uh, it used to be called Railvolution. I got the information from Joey, who said, you know, Chair, is anyone interested in this conference? I, the only person I know who um, has 
attended this over the years is actually managing director Michael Formby. So I asked him about this before I brought it before you. Mike believes that this is one of the best conferences that that you can you can attend. And so he said he strongly recommends that if people on the board um, are interested that this is something that we should consider. I apologize to the members that it's kind of weird because it's this would involve Sunshine Communications. So it's not something that I could go and ask anybody about beforehand. So what we're gonna, what I'm gonna ask for is by way of a motion, if this is something that people think is worthwhile attending, is that we allocate um, 12, was it 12,000 then that we thought would be around 12? So a maximum of $12,000. And we would um, not violate Sunshine. So the maximum number of people that could attend would be five, correct? Yes. Would be five. And just so that we're clear, what I would also have to find out is whether Roger Morton, Ed Sniffen, and Robert Yu in their other capacities would attend because then they would, of course, affect our numbers in terms of Sunshine. Uh, if they were interested, and then um, ask any members who might be interested to let, would have to be Dan, because you couldn't communicate with me, God, this is so complicated, it would have to be Dan, and Dan would give me the list. So what we're asking for in terms of a, a eventual motion, if there's an interest, is that you um, allocate the uh, maximum of 12,000, no more than five members, uh, to attend, and also that you give me the discretion of selecting who will go, because we it's just too short a period of time. You see, it's November 5th to 8th. And then I'm going to ask Joey Monahan to give us assistance in terms of planning for this. And like I said, Michael Formby says this is, this is a great conference. What um, Laurie experienced with APTA is that, you know, these conferences are something that the real community, you should get to, members of the board should get to know this community. And, and it's the topics was what intrigued me when I looked at this. So having said that, members, that's what I'm posing before you. I'll make full disclosure, I'm not interested. <laughs> so I don't have a conflict in selecting any of you to go. I, I'm not. I'm not interested. Uh, but uh, like I said, I think this is something that uh, members uh, should consider, especially those who may be part of uh, uh, the Anthony's uh, pig, because it is talking about the future of rail and so forth. And this is an idea of what they're doing elsewhere. So, with that, uh, any discussion, members? Um. Chair, if I, if, yes. Oh, okay. sorry, if I may add. So yes, up to five members, you are allowed to participate in discussions. You are allowed to communicate amongst yourselves. Uh, that's specifically allowed under Sunshine Law. And then there's a provision that at the next board meeting, attendees would report to the board on the conference. Right. So so if, if, if we, um, the money is really, would not be, uh, would be affected if, for example, Roger, Robert Ann or Ed Sniffen were to go and were on the other payrolls and going. But if not, this is this is the maximum that we can send. And I'm not saying we're gonna spend it all, I'm just saying that's what we need in terms of to cover all your costs of this event. So with that, can I have a motion? Somebody yeah, there's a motion. You make there's a motion by Art or second? A second. And a second by Anthony. Okay, open for discussion. And then this motion has all those components to it. Nate, are you willing to speak on this? I was going to add oh, my two cents. Please, no, please. Yeah. Just because it's my hometown. Oh, well, that te Tempe is uh, Well, yes, yes. Phoenix downtown. And I, oh, okay. So that was actually my first project was the initial leg of uh, Valley Metro there. Um, but if you guys do decide to go to this conference, I think it's a good thing to take notice. So Phoenix was a city or Arizona was a state that was the wild wild west. We didn't want rail. And it took so long to get on the ballot. It took so long to get funding for it. But the city never wanted rail whatsoever. 
Um, downtown Phoenix, where this uh, conference is at, was a place that nobody went to. Nobody went to downtown Phoenix. There was nothing there. Uh, even the sports teams were moving out of downtown Phoenix. That's why the football team's out in Glendale, which is very far away. But so you're seeing the end product or the current product of the transformation of the city because of rail. You'll ride the rail into downtown Phoenix. You'll see restaurants, bars, stadiums, satellite campuses. Um, and it has turned around what downtown Phoenix is. It's a destination. So hope you guys are able to attend, but just take notice that it's a city that never wanted rail and now has done four extensions and a streetcar. And so it's a good example of, you know, some of the side benefits and that's transformation of the community and safety of downtowns like that. Just wanted to add that. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, and when did you guys start building rail there? What year do you remember? 2007, I think. Well, just a little before Hawaii then. And it's it still building? It is. They're still building, but it's much simpler. It's shared guideway. It's at grade. You'll see that the stations are essentially just a platform with a canopy and a screen and a ticket vending machine. So it's much more simplistic. Um, you know, you got to watch out on every left turn because you share the guideway with the train. Um, but what, it was much simpler, quicker, and uh, cheaper to build that way. Do they have anything that's uh, like cars? Uh, elevated? No, no yeah. elevated, no automated. Everything operates off the overhead catenary system. Thank but you. you can see a nice example of a light rail um, being integrated with the streetcar line and then, and then bus rapid transit. So it's, it's good. It's so a different kind of community because it's urban sprawl and we're very dense. Um, but same concept and you can see the end product. So it was always uh, at grade, light rail system. Yes. Sounds like TriMet. Yeah. Well, TriMet is getting to be more and more grade separated as they develop more, even though it's light rail. It was. When JC did it, it was light rail. Still is. Yeah. It's and, it's, and it's TriMet because it's three metropolitan areas, right? And the weather should sure. be good. Of course, yeah. I told Lori that in October. I've actually been there, and I, I saw the transformation. I was there before rail, and when the rail system was there. So, uh, I think it's a great destination to see. But I, I'm, I'm not interested in the travel. <laughs> I just, you like me to travel down already. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, Chair, just one comment. Yeah. Um, Think about it. I've been to Rail Evolution, um, you know, two or three times, but I just saw the agenda, and I'm kind of surprised. Everything is pretty much a la carte. You actually have to pay. In addition to the registration fee, you have to pay for most of the sessions. Yeah. No, well, I mean, there's a lot of them, right? Yeah. No, I, yeah, I mean, there's very limited sessions, but most of the workshop, which which are the interesting stuff, is all a la carte. <laughs> no, I think whoever's hey, working. have a comment. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, that's my comment. Michelle. Hey, um, if a bunch of people do go, if mo or anybody goes, I think my suggestion would be that that we we work together with Lori and her team to put together just a info sheet on the rail so that we're all consistent about you know when it opened, what status we're at, those kinds of things. I don't want to restrict anybody from like saying what they personally think, but the facts. I think we should have a fact sheet so that we're kind of all talking at the same point of you know where we are what the status is and that we can be kind of consistent about that because um, what what I found is sometimes when senior people go to conferences that you know everybody you know we go to parties we like talk to other people and we say what our personal opinion is but you know the status of the rail is kind of a fact thing and I think we want to be consistent with you know how much progress we've made and where we're going. We have that ready for you Michelle. That's a good idea. We have it ready. Okay. She'll have it ready for you. So I think that the, um, I, I looked at the a la carte things, but if, if everybody splits up, it's, it's pretty, it's not that bad. Uh, I think in terms of uh, an amount 
And I think you'd you know, once you get to the point where whoever's going is going, uh, you can discuss among yourselves. And remember, you're going for the benefit of this system and reporting back to this board. So, and that's assuming, if, you know, we may go through all of this and none of you may be interested. I mean, you know, people may be on travel or something else, but I was hoping that at least, uh, and as um, Robert put into the next budget, you know, we're, we're looking at potentially having board members uh, travel. Maybe the next time will be APTA or wherever. But uh, I think that this one piqued my interest because it looked like something that was similar to us and we could, uh, we could benefit from that. So we do have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? And uh, if you need any more clarification as to how I'm saying we're going to, if you're interested, please let, uh, and you have to do it quickly because, you know, it is November 5th. And uh, we'll have to ask Joey to assist. And as you know, uh, air travel is, is it coach? It's coach, right? Air travel is coach, guys. And we have the hotel rooms and everything else, but air travel is coach. Yeah, you can use your own miles to upgrade yourself yeah, if you want to. You but, can use uh, your yeah. miles to upgrade, <laughs> but it is coach. That's what we will pay. Anything else? Do we? Uh, we don't chair. Do yes. Chair. Um, yeah. For what it's worth, if nobody wants to go, uh, I'll volunteer. I'm planning to be in Phoenix at about that same time anyway. Oh, you are? Oh, good. Yes. So we can negotiate with you about your airfare. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Not not to be cheap about it, but, you know. <laughs> no, actually, we can pay you, you from, you won't have to pay from your the airfare. Phoenix to Hawaii. <laughs> I'm willing to pay that. No, but, but anyway, no, I probably. think that that's, uh, no, it would be, I think it would be beneficial. So any other discussion? We have somebody at least who's going to be there who's willing to attend. The rest of you can mull it over. Please let Dan know. Dan will provide me with a, a, a list and a part of the motion will be to permit me to select. I am not going. Uh, and um, all of you who could go, uh, I wish you would give it consideration. Yes, Just a fair, uh, I'm not going to go, but uh, so, but I, I do think that the conference is worthwhile. Uh, and I think that historically, there's been a lot of other Hawaii people that have attended this conference. Uh, Move Oahu Forward right. has been a, a pretty um, dedicated group going to that. Um, I, I know in the past that there have been some other state agencies that have attended. Uh, so, but I, I think the conference is a, is a good conference as far as, uh, as Nate was saying, what kind of development impacts rail can have. It's not so much uh, about a technical transit um, conference, but it, it is more the uh, TOD aspects and the development aspects that, uh, that are highlighted um, in it. Mm -hmm. That's great. By the way, Laurie, is anyone from Hart going? Okay. Oh, none of none of you guys are going. Okay, because I know I was. I'm kind of that surprises me because I always thought the revolution was something that uh, they attended. I know MOF guys uh, attended. There, a lot of them attend. Uh, who are members of Move Oahu Forward? Who go on their own? Yes. Yeah, Mark Garrity, Oahu Metropolitan Planning Organization. Uh -huh. Just to let you know, um, I will be attending Revolution, and our chair, um, Cordero, Council Member Cordero, will also be attending. Oh, great. So, uh, you know, there is, I think there's going to be some representation uh, from the city side, maybe from the NPO side, just to support your government. Thank you. Any other discussion? If not, um, do I need to take a vote, or do I have unanimous consent on the the motion as I proposed it? Okay, unanimous. thank you very much, members. And please think about it very hard. Let poor Dan, <laughs> Dan Glock know, and we will <laughs> move on it accordingly. Thank you. Next is agenda item number 10, which is owner controlled insurance policy change order. Brent, or oh, it's Nate again. Sorry, okay. Chair. Brent is off today. Yes, Brent had a scheduled PTL, I think, that was scheduled before Tuesday. 
I checked, but so you get Nate instead of Brent, and I'll try to be quick and give you as much knowledge as I have about OSEP. So uh, we presented this change order on Tuesday at the committee meeting and wanted and it got approved and now we are requesting the full board's approval of this change order request. Go to the next slide, please. Um, to break it down from the beginning, so these services are for Aon, our insurance broker. Of course, the OSA program is the owner controlled insurance program. Uh, the intent of that program is for the owner to buy the insurance for the project to net in a better price overall by um, allowing an economy of scale type of insurance policy uh, and then the contractors discount their bid. So this first slide talks about the breakout in the current contract value of 49 million. Uh, a couple of the contract stats up there. Um, this change order is essentially two requests. The first request is to extend these services by two years, and that's six million. The second request here is to approve or concur with the accounting reconciliation of moving funds or costs incurred to date from hard 201 CPP to MM951, which is the appropriate CPP for these services. So take me to the next page, please. Uh, this breakout will show you as will show you that. So um, the second estimated cost to complete rows there, the total cost to complete through 815. 2025 is that 6,061,806 6, number. So that is, I guess, the new money is change order request that we're requesting. That's for the extension of the next two years of services. Then there's an accounting reconciliation, which is that 15 million we talked about going from part 201, where it should not have been charged, reconciling it to MM951, where it is appropriately charged. So those two together is the uh, Cumulative request of the 15.5, um, but the real change order is the 6 million that we are going to use to extend the services for OSA. Um, give me the next slide, please. And then actually go one back up. Apologies. So that brings our current contract value up to 60 million. If you guys recall the discussion from the committee, our uh, full estimate at completion is 90 or 95 million in the uh, uh, CPP. So we have cost of these services projected out to the end. Uh, and so this, although a change in a reconciliation has no impact on the overall EAC and the recovery plan budget. Next slide, please. Um, so these are the two requests to reiterate uh, a change order request to extend the services for $6 million for two years and then a re reallocation of cost between CPPs there at the 9.4 million. Uh, open to any questions, thank you. Members, any questions? We had a long discussion on this in the committee. But... Rob. Uh, thanks, Chair. So Nate, um, just to be clear, um, the change order request is for 15 million, meaning the Aon contract is $15 million short um, all the way to 2025, right? And also wanting to be clear, the amount that you pay in HR 200, um, it was paid beyond the current Aon contract amount. So it wasn't really just a simple transfer of money from HRT 200 to the OSIP CPP. So it, it was really um paying for something that's beyond what the contract is and now you're asking to increase the aon contract by 15 million dollars to 2025 so it's as simple as that right yes. because the money transfer from hrt 200 to osip you could do it without board approval it's almost like recording it in the wrong account Right. Okay. Okay. I got it. Yes, yes, sir. Thanks for clarifying. And then, Chair, you got a follow up. Chair and Natalie, you guys both had follow up questions from the POC. I was able to get one of those. You, Chair, and you requested what were the amounts of uh, deductible paybacks that we could pursue by mm -hmm. our current contractors. Our actual biggest user of these services has been STG. 
Um, but if you look at what we could potentially pursue, it's only 125,000. So it's, you know, it's not a big drop in the bucket. Um, so the next one is Hitachi and that's just under a hundred K. So they're not huge, you know, potential to get cost reimbursed for, um, but that was the follow-up action. And then Natalie still chasing down yours and we'll report back on your questions. But what about the past claims? Even if we may not be able to pursue them, what about the past claims? So because all of all of the West Side or Phase One totaled just over a hundred k. All of the West Side. All of them, yeah. Potential that we could pursue. So what about the um, the, the the we had two deaths, I think, on Farrington Highway. They were not covered under this insurance policies. I don't know that answer to that. Brent will have to do that. So Brent pulled up. Uh, Brent got a report from Aon that shows all of our deductibles paid to date, um, and we can forward that along. It has that. Well, it could be. I guess there's a difference in my mind between the deductible and the claim That's, amount. Yes. So to see whether or not this insurance policy thing is a good deal or not, and who is it for, and how does it get affected? Maybe we need to expand that request to what is the deductible and what is the claim? Because my understanding is the deductible is twenty five thousand. However, we have this half a million dollars per claim maximum, right? Which we pay, right? Yes. So I guess that's my other question: How much of that half a million dollars? What what you're telling me? is even if we have a maximum of half a million dollars per claim that we pay, that it's only come out to 125 and 100,000. And the, of that amount, the, the general or whoever is buying the policy is really only on the hook for 25,000. Let me get that spreadsheet go over with Trent so we both better understand it and then we can send it to you guys or we can discuss it if you want. Right. No, and I'm 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 just trying to figure out if this is a good deal or not. And it seems to me I mean, I don't have an answer for that whether it's a good deal because what the if you didn't watch this hearing when we were going over it before, the the reason why we're doing a 2-year extension is because you know, doing this analysis as to whether we should consider uh, continue with the OSEP program. But the other issue is that when are you going to cut the workers' comp part of it out? So it's been cut out on projects moving forward, okay. like the NAN and Coluccio cut out. Uh, but the reason we did the two year extension, like you said, was to keep STG and Hitachi covered till we get the segment two opening. So any forward looking contracts will already have cut out the workers' comp. The workers' comp part, yes. part of it. So then, um, yeah. I guess CCGS will also have it cut out. That's correct. Okay, but the question is whether or not we will, what we will do with the general liability, the comprehensive CGL policy, That's which correct. is under yes. this. All right. Any other question, members? So, do we need a motion? Is that what you need? Yes. Okay. And the motion that you need is that you want us oh, to, to vote and approve this change. To vote and approve this change. Yeah. Yes. I uh, move that we vote and approve this change. Okay. Any second? Then a second with by Art. Members, any discussion? Well, the motion is to approve the change as requested. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, members, do we have unanimous consent? We have unanimous consent. Thank you, Nate. Thank you. Okay. That was agenda item number 10. Agenda item number 11 was the Shimek Joint Venture Change Order. I believe we were briefed. Uh, in the um, prior POC, was it? It was a POC. Uh, members, um, there really is no action that we need to take on it. This was put on the agenda because we thought we might have an action. I'm just going to defer this matter unless uh, somebody here wants to be briefed again on this.
No, it was an executive session anyway. So, uh, okay, with that, I'm going to defer agenda item number 11. By the way, anyone here to testify on agenda item number 11? Anyone online? Thank you. So we're going to move to agenda item number 12, with the, which is the revisions to heart board rules and policies. First of all, anyone here to testify on agenda item number 12? Anyone online? Okay, members, no. um, we are going to probably take more than one session to to, re to review all the board rules that have been proposed before you. The purpose of this, what I'd like to do, is to limit it only to that portion of the rules that deal with the executive officer of the board. As you know, with uh, when Cindy left, uh, it's <laughs> put an amazing strain on poor Dan Gluck, uh, Laurie's people, as well as uh, you know, just trying to get prepared for these meetings. And we need to have someone come on board, but we also need to be sure that we have a clear line as to who hires and who controls and where the money comes from and who sets the salary. So with that, do we need an executive session? I have an executive session here, or are we willing... So, um... Up to the board, I had some comments uh, that I can give an executive session if you would like okay. to discuss an open session. Okay. Members, we have some comments from uh, our attorney to be, could be discussed in executive session. So my recommendation is why don't we go into executive session and then discuss it and take action. And I, as I said, I would like to propose, unless anyone else wants to go through other parts of the rules, which you can if you want to. Uh, but at this time, I was thinking we would concentrate on the executive officer of, and the executive officer and the staff of the uh, board of directors. So with that, can I have a motion to, oh, okay. okay, move a second. What we're doing is we're gonna move into executive session pursuant to Hawaii Revised Statute section 92-4, subsection 92-5A4, and this is to consult with our attorney on questions and issues on matters pertaining to the board's powers, duties, privileges, immunities, and liabilities. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yes, Chair Natalie. Yes, Natalie. Thank you. So um, I understand I will not be allowed in the executive session because I haven't signed the confidentiality agreement. Um, I we just have a request. Um, since the agenda had a link to it to only section 12, rule 12 of the um, rules, I ask that you respect that and not discuss any of the other proposed rules during your executive session. I am um, I am prepared to make a comment on that section after you come out, but not on anything else. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? If not, uh, do we have unanimous consent to get into executive session? Hearing no objection, we do, and we will be going into executive session because Edwin and Michelle are online. We are staying put, and everyone else must leave. Thank you very much. We're back from executive session and we are on agenda item number 12, which is the revisions of heart rules, board rules and policies. Um, though I've already asked for this, is there anyone, there's nobody here, but I'll ask it anyway. <laughs> If anyone here wishes to speak um, on Chair, you need to do a summary of the executive yeah. session. Yeah. Okay, shall I do that first before I do this? Okay. So the summary of the executive session, which is now required under the Sunshine Law, is that the board discussed and only discussed section rule 12, section 12.1 through section 12.5 in executive sessions. And um, uh, we were provided by the attorney with drafts of the rules edits, as he stated earlier, that he is proposing. And with that, the board is 
now out of executive session. So having said that, is there any member of the public who wishes to testify on agenda item number 12? We've already asked that, but just to be sure, no one online, right? So, okay. So members, we are back out of executive session. Laura, you wanted to make a comment on the board rules? Okay, I sent it to you earlier. Oh, but do you, did you, but did you send it to everybody? Yes. Oh, okay. Would you like to summarize it? Because the public doesn't have it. Sure. Um, so, so, a couple of my comments is because no one the executive director can be involved. I understand that, but um, I understand so this is more for the comments. So, the way those are not to consult the court, then feedback there. And then, with respect to salary, could be in conjunction with the executive director because after it passes through me, it goes to the Department of Human Resources. They're actually the ones who have to approve the salary. And uh, then the other one was on the budget. Same thing for the office office. Executive director some of the amendments make the place of the code returning to the consultant. So I just asked the consultant for the yeah, we have, we have consulted with yeah. CORE on, on this, and uh, Thank you, Chair. The, uh, the, what we have proposed in the rule, uh, and we're going to go over that, uh, is in compliance with, with what CORE has, has advised us. And we do retain the fact that you are the Chief Procurement Officer. However, the, uh, the board is still the policymaker and in control of the budget of, of HART, all of HART. So thank you very much. Anyone else? I think Natalie, you had a comment that you said you wanted to make as well. Yeah, thank you. So um, I, I'm just wondering, what is the impetus for the um, executive secretary to now track attendance? What is what is the reasoning behind that? I don't think it's part of Section 12. Is it part of Section 12? I thought there was a statement in there about a 12.2. Uh, yeah. Let's see, right about the middle of the paragraph. Oh. Maintaining board attendance records, yeah. I think that, it, and I'm not sure whether we are going to keep that policy, but there was once a, I don't know whether it was a, um, a city rule that if you miss more than three, Three meetings in a row, or, or three meetings that that uh, you could be removed as a member, and I think that's so that what the executive officer of the board was going to do was to keep the appointing authorities apprised as to who's in attendance, because then the action of what happens to that is up to whoever the appointing authority is, and that's why because we don't give anything else, and we don't expect the appointing authorities to be there watching watching who it is because uh, the rules or the whatever it is was is it an ordinance that says there's something that says that boards and commissions if you miss three it's a statute, like a statute. if you oh. miss more than three meetings yeah yeah and i if i yeah. may chair i think right. natalie i think my bigger concern is just with tracking uh quorum and votes since many of the votes are done by unanimous consent i think we have to just make clear who is attending each meeting so that we know who is voting on which particular item and okay the, and i think your specific question was why would the executive officer tell the appointing authorities who's in attendance but if people don't attend meetings, it does affect our ability to conduct business. And like I said, there is a rule or something that says if you miss three three meetings, then you can be you can be removed. Okay, so yeah, I, I understand it. There is. I remember when I was on the neighborhood board that we had that rule in place and a lot of times nothing was done, although it could have been. Um, so I guess my concern um, was just that we're adding, it seems to me, adding another um, requirement on this position. And, um, you know, 
with the way the things are today, trying to fill positions, not only at heart at the city, but overall, people are having a hard time filling positions that um, I'm just concerned about adding more responsibilities. But I, I do understand why it's being put in there. Thank you. Any Anything else? Sure. Yes. For the record, I was late today, but I, I am present. Thank you. Oh, and, Thank you. Thank you, Kiko. Um, Thank you. And that art uh, had to leave during the yeah, session. Yeah, and art, yeah. art had to be. Any, anything else? Okay. Dan, would you like to... We have friendly amendments to what has been part of the, uh, the board packet, and we are just referring to rule number 12, the board executive officer. Right, so I'm going to read off the amendments made by the board. Um, so we're going to start with the very first sentence under section 12.1. It will now read, the executive officer is selected by and directed by the board, comma, through its board chair. Um, so that will be, uh, that change to 12.1. And then the only other changes are to 12.5. Uh, the changes to 12.5 are somewhat extensive. We're going to end up with one large-ish paragraph um, that will read as follows. The executive director may be required to process various administrative documents for the direct employees of the board, period. However, the executive director shall not have any supervisory authority over the board executive officer or the executive officer's uh, staff or consultants, period. The executive director shall not have any authority regarding compensation of or expenditures by the board or the board's direct employees, provided that the executive director shall remain the chief procurement officer for the authority as a whole, period. The executive officer shall interview and select any additional direct employees of the board determined in the budget as to FTEs subject to the approval of the board, period. The executive officer shall provide inputs to the organizational chart as it applies to the needs of the board. Uh, in addition, the budget shall set forth expenditures. I'm sorry. Uh, in addition, the budget shall set forth the board's expenditures. The executive director shall not uh, direct board operations. The executive director shall expeditiously fulfill any administrative requests made by the board executive officer. So members, um, may I have a motion to accept the rule uh, 12 as has been, we can call it a friendly amendment or we can just, we've never acted on this before. So it is as read by the uh, attorney for the board. Right. So move. With motion second. second and the second. So we're into discussion. Members, any discussion on the now proposed rule 12? And by the way, just so that we're clear, I've checked with um, Dan Gluck, and we can implement our rules piecemeal like this. And I think the issue of the executive officer of the board and the staff of the board is critical that we should implement this part of the rule uh, immediately. So with that, any other discussion, members? Yes, um, yes. Chair Natalie. Just, just a question, clarification. So. Um, so there were concerns about procurement and the role of the ED in this. I just wanted to make sure that has all been um, approved by CORE as to uh, if we put this new rule into effect. Is that correct? Um, that is correct. Uh, we do have a line specifically in here about how uh, Lori shall remain the chief procurement officer. Everyone is very clear on that. Um, also, I wanted to address uh, Lori's earlier comment about consulting with DHR. Again, the board is aware of that as well to ensure compliance with DHR policies. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Anyone else? Any other comments? Discussion? If not, members, do we have unanimous consent on the 
adoption of rule 12 as read as presented before you and as read by dan gluck as to those specific changes to what was handed out do we have unanimous? We have unanimous consent. Thank you very much, members. Now we are going to move on to item number 13 is the recruitment and the hiring of the board executive officer. And um, anyone? There's nobody here. <laughs> I should ask anyway. Maybe they're hidden somewhere. Anyone here to comment on agenda item number 13? Anyone? online nope so with that we'll proceed michelle i have um you as the person uh, to speak to the recruitment hiring of the board's executive officer and we also have a provision here for uh, executive session if that's what we'd like to get into michelle uh oh i'm here <laughs> what, what am i supposed to say um uh Okay, I'm not. I'll be really honest. I'm. I'm not prepared for this topic, but give me a hint, and I'll like. Um, I'll, I'll make some, make make a comment. How you want to recruit? Um, yeah, this is this is really more a question of because you're HR for the board. It's a matter of how we're gonna, uh, you know, recruit. How we're gonna get yeah, the criteria oh, and so forth. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So, um, I think what we need to do is, um look at the previous uh vacancy notices and then um so if laurie if you could just I, i'm sure that they're from quite some time ago we'll add well um what i'll do is i'll look at that i will add the um the information that we have in the in the board rules um in terms of the executive officers roles and responsibilities um i'll consult with uh colleen primarily and uh, I will uh, put forward a draft next month for everyone to look at so that we can put the vacancy out as soon as possible. If we, I'm not, what I don't know is, it's because this is not something that you have to kind of approve this, does the board have to approve this? Um, so I'm looking to Dan to know if we can do this kind of offline or if we have to do it um, in public committee meetings and board meetings. Um, I mean, in terms of the, oh, sorry, in terms of the review and selection of candidates, I mean, that can be done ex in executive session. Um, but uh, if the board needs to discuss candidates and qualifications and things, that would have to be done during a meeting. Okay. In terms of reviewing a, a draft vacancy announcement, can we do that offline and then like, you know, and then bring something with everyone's comments to a committee meeting next month uh yes but we I could do that i could circulate a draft and then everyone can send their comments directly back to me not to each other okay. but to me i can right. compile them then for the next meeting okay let's th that would be my suggestion is that you know in the next week or so Lori, um if you could have the staff just send me the previous vacancy announcement i'll write a draft and then Dan can circulate it to all the members and then we'll collect comments and then we'll present that at the committee meeting. Um, and, and Colleen, so the question to you is if the committee um, agrees on what should be in the, the vacancy, we can have Hart post it then. We can um, put it for information to the board. And if anyone has any substantive changes, we can just add those substantive changes. But that'll like take, you know, two weeks off the timeline of putting a vacancy out. I think that's fine. We were just subject to the, you know, the the board's approval, and I don't think the board would disapprove uh, that that way of expediting this this need that we have. So I think that's fine. Okay. Okay. The other thing that I need to do is I need to do some research because um, of the compensation that that we need to discuss at the committee meeting in terms of what the salary range will be for the position. So. Um, in addition to the vacancy announcement, the, the other most important thing is the compensation, right? And and what would be appropriate and, and how we would handle that if it falls outside of, uh, which it might, if it falls outside of what uh, the main HR, you know, standards are for that kind of position. Sure. 
Yes. On that re regard, I am a recipient of the APTA national compensation reports, and I can I can uh, extract that information and send it to Dan. Is that a reasonable, Dan? And the, the only reason we're for Dan is because of the fact that we don't have an executive officer right. and we can't have all of you communicating with each other and violate sunshine. So everyone should eliminate reply all from your computer because that's what's going to cause our problem. As to compensation, um, Robert, in, in the budget, is there the compensation issue? You mean with res with respect to the executive officer or employees generally? Is there a category or something like that within the budget for the for from the board's perspective, or will there be? Um, with respect to um, the board's budget, um, there's not an issue because the board is allowed to move money from one character of expenditure to another, and that's allowed by you know, ordinance and also the heart charter. So as we presently stand, mm -hmm. and not with the upcoming budget that you're proposing, but where we presently stand, can you tell us how much is in the budget for the board? Um, there's, I, I could tell you this. I think there's two FTEs for for the board, one for the executive officer and another person, for, another position for the staff. And I think with respect to the budget amount for the FTEs, um, it is, I think, $150,000. Now, um, that seems very low for two FTEs. Um, the question is, is when you're going to hire the FTEs, right? You know, if we're going to start recruiting, I don't know, in June or July, and it will take six months or whatnot, um, beginning... Uh, you know, next fiscal year, then we're not going to spend an entire $149,000. So it, it kind of all depends on the timing of the recruitment. But then, you know, we have the ability to kind of move money from one character to the other, just like what we did with um, the, the fiscal year 24 budget amendment for capital labor costs. So what you're saying is that we could, for example, so even if we hire, uh, the the budgeted amount is going to be by fiscal year, is what you're saying. Correct. So even if we were to hire by January 1st, which is probably very ambitious, sorry, Dan, but that seems very ambitious, but uh, and then, then we're really talking about six months salary is what you're saying. Yes, that's correct. Yes. So I think we're pretty... We're, we're pretty well covered because then the and the other FTE position and then we can move. So I, I think it's just a matter of whatever we decide to do, we can move within the total budget. So is what's the total budget for the board? I have you know, no idea. I, yeah, I think it's about seven hundred seven hundred fifty thousand. And we don't use that kind of money, right? No, we don't use that kind of money. Yeah. So I think you got pretty wide whatever you think we'll be able to cover. Now, um, I, I know we're not talking about the really the board specific budget, but it's a lot higher this year than in the past because of the internal audit or the potential internal audit work that the board approved, you know, a few meetings ago. Is that about 250? Um, that that was, was in the budget. Yes. Yeah, two fifty or something. So the internal auditor is is also part of that seven hundred thousand. Huh? It still leaves four hundred fifty. Yeah, it's still a lot of money left over. Uh, so, Chair, I think an executive session would occur. Right? Okay. So um, maybe this is a question for the executive session. I was just wondering how this the the process works. Do we does the HR committee do the interviews? Do we appoint a a, a pig to do interview candidates? How does I, that work? I think we can decide that. We can further discuss what's the best way to proceed on that. What's it's really going to be up to the board as to how you want to schedule that. Um, and again, I don't think that that would need to be an executive session. That discussion, the process, you can discuss in open session. I think that's what Michelle was asking for. Whatever comments that we may have or 
questions, send it to Dan and Dan will get it to her and she'll come up with a proposal at the next meeting. Is that right, Michelle? Yeah, and I think, um, Anthony, I think that was a really good catch. And I, I hadn't really thought about that, about the selection process that I hadn't thought that far ahead. So I'll add kind of a draft of here's some choices um, of how we could do the selection. You could do it with the HR committee. You could have a pig. You could like, you know, whatever. Um, you could you could do it at the full, full at a full board meeting, um, which is kind of similar to how we select the ninth member, right? Um, and so we can we can I'll lay them out, and then people can give their comments, and then we can make a recommendation to the full board, and then the board can make a decision on what's appropriate and how they think that that should work. So that was a really good catch. Thank you. I'll add that to my to do list. We probably could create a pig at the next meeting for that with the whatever whatever Michelle comes up with. And then it may be easier to do the interviews that way. But that's something that we can decide as a board. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um I'm I'm a little bit worried about um the compensation falling outside of the Hawaii, you know, range and having to go for additional approval because from what Lori has said is that that takes time and there's a back and forth that goes through and the, the board might need to reemphasize how important this is to us, right? So that we can get something through, but I am I am a little bit worried. So, so I need a little bit of help with what the salary range could be, what it normally would be, and then we can make a decision on whether that's appropriate or not appropriate. Okay, uh, our attorney has said that uh, he thinks we'll be fine. Okay. That. Okay. 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 Great. So, so it, I'll, I'll just send me, everybody send me what you got. Roger, send your stuff to Dan. Um, Lori, have HR send me what they have, and then I will draft something, send it to Dan. He can send it to everyone. So, any I, comments I think it's anyone done in two has, weeks or so. please send it to Dan first, and Dan will get it to Michelle, and we won't be violating Sunshine. Any other discussion on this item? We don't need to. We don't need to have an action on this, and we don't need to go in executive session. No, I, I think actually executive session would be a good idea. Okay, our attorney is recommending that we go into executive session on this. So this is um, the recruitment and hiring of the board's executive officer, and we're proposing an executive session. So we will need a motion that the board may enter into executive session pursuant to Hawaii Revised Statute Section 92-4 and Subsection 92-5A2. And this is to consider the higher evaluation, dismissal or discipline of any of an officer or employee or of charges brought against the officer or employee where consideration of matters affecting privacy will be involved. And Subsection 92-5A2 for to consult with its attorneys on questions and issues on a matter pertaining to the board's powers, duties, privileges, immunities, and liabilities. Can I have a motion? Chair, I so move. Second. Sure. Any further discussion? If Chair, yeah, Natalie. Yes. It's just, just stating the correct record. Um, so I understand I'm not able to attend because I haven't signed the confidentiality agreement and there's a disagreement between the AG and Corporation Council. I would like that comment to stand for the, any um, of the remaining ex remaining executive sessions as well. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Any other comments or discussions? If not, do I have unanimous consent? We do. So members, we will be going into executive session. Thank you very much. We stay members because we have two people on Zoom. Thank you, we are now back from executive session. It is approximately 12.45 in the afternoon. We went into executive session on agenda number 13, the recruitment and hiring of the board executive officer, that's the board's executive officer, we need to do a summary of what happened in executive session. Michelle, do you want to do it or shall I do it? Um, I'm happy to do it. Okay. Um, we we uh, got some legal advice from uh, our council and uh, we agreed that what we would do is um, try to expedite our processes fast as we can and ensure that the agenda for the next committee meeting is completed by next week Friday so that we can um, 
uh, expedite our hiring process for the uh, executive assistant. Okay. Now, uh, so we'll move on. Uh, before we move on to anything else, I'm going to go back to agenda item number five, which is our committee reports. Kika has now arrived. So if Kika will give us a summary of the October 17, 2023 Project Oversight Committee. I see no one here, and I'll just out of the abundance of caution, I'll ask if there's anyone in present. No one is present. How about online that might want to comment on this? Okay, Kika. Sorry. Okay, thank you, Chair. Brief uh summary uh again the meeting for the project oversight committee uh, met on tuesday october 17th uh, we reviewed the august uh, progress report as well as the um, we did have the june july and august pmoc report but we focused primarily on the latest uh, report which was the august report uh, we also discussed the uh owner controlled insurance policy change order that was on the agenda and recommended approval uh, to the full board, which I believe uh, the full board took action earlier today. And we also uh, in executive session discussed the STG uh, joint venture change order um, and uh, deferred the matter. That's, that's it for the uh, POC committee, Chair. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments by the members? If not, we'll move on. Check it. Okay. I was just calling to make sure we had qualms. Thank you very much. So, um, agenda items number 16 and, uh, uh, I mean, sorry, 14 and 15, I'm going to defer. Uh, and now we'll move on to agenda item number 16, which is the um, heart report. On sure. The yes. Sure. Uh, since it's on the agenda, may I make a comment? Is that allowed? On which one? Uh, well, it applies to both, actually, but you can choose if you'd like. Oh, no, no. Whichever one you want to make a comment on. We are deferring the matter. But... Yeah. Okay. So on the, the um, executive director response to performance evaluation. Okay. So I was actually surprised to see this on the agenda, and I'm glad that you're deferring it. Um, I just, I've been thinking about this for a while. I've noticed there's some tension in um, our meetings and some perhaps animosity and a feeling of kind of us versus them. And uh, it was better today, but I see it in the questions. I see it in member comments the proposed rules, which I feel are micromanaging the ED. Um, and I just I just want to put that out there because when we have this kind of uh, feeling out there, other people notice. And I'm sure it makes the job um, more stressful and could potentially impact morale. And um, I just, I, I wanted to state, I, I wasn't party to any of those evaluation discussions, but I wanted to state that I believe that Lori has done a very good job given everything that she's been handed in the past and she's made mistakes, but I just wanted to make that statement formally because I, I'm concerned with um, what I see and what I hear in our meetings. So thank you for letting me make that statement. Thank you very much. So we're moving on to uh, agenda item number 16, which is the heart re report on dashboards. I don't see Nate, yeah. but- Sorry, Chair, I just texted Nate. I, I wasn't sure if you oh, folks were gonna no, do No problem. Session. So is it okay Oh, we can move to... on. So let Thanks. me come back to that and let's go to agenda item number 17, CCUR traffic impacts. First of all, I don't see anyone, but is there anybody who wishes to comment on that? I don't see no nothing online. Thank you. So you may begin, Joey. Uh, well, good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon. Members. Um, thankfully, there's no. Uh, we have nothing to report from the field uh, this month. 
I don't know if you caught it, but I said that we would be calling upon your assistance on the um, part members. I did catch all of that, so yeah. I, I will be assisting. Okay, thank you very much, because you're the ones who brought it to my attention. Gladly. So thank you. Members, any questions, even if there's no report? Actually. Yes. Chair, thanks. Chair. As it happens, yesterday I went for my sins. I had to go to Costco in the village. <laughs> And I noticed that a couple of cars were making left turns into Costco, even though it was actually coned off. They was, and there was a, a police car parked right across the street, and the cop was sat in it. I don't even know if he was paying attention. And then I saw the, the, the police car at the next intersection at the traffic light. Um, I forget the name of the road that goes past Kapalama Hale. Um, Alakea, I guess, is it? Hmm? Alakaba, right. And same thing cop asleep in his car. If we're paying these people, can they not be out on the street and actually paying attention to what's going on and directing the traffic? Yeah, so we, we've, uh, you know, unfortunately, I don't think there's uh, much we can tell them uh, in terms of, um, you know, once they're out there, is my understanding. Well, let's get rid of them and hire some people who will do the job properly. Uh, just uh, for information, uh, the number of police officers that we require are determined by DTS uh, and by uh, by other departments, and so Hearts got their hands tied a little bit over uh, what what they can do. And I, I certainly hear the issue that you bring up. The large, in my view, the largest value of the HPD being out there is the blue light car, uh, because it's certainly I I see the same issue that you see, but. It is, it is what it is that they are the, uh, uh, the, the uh, you know, there is a requirement for a traffic management plan. Uh, and Hart submits that just like everybody else does. They get a permit for that. Uh, so it's not as easy as th them deciding to um, get rid of them. I mean, I, I was being a slightly facetious, but only slightly. I mean, it, 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 we could reach out to HPD and say, and ask them why we're paying these guys if they're not actually going to be doing anything. I mean, like, like I say, I saw two infractions directly in front of me. It happens all the time. I agree. I totally <clears throat> agree. So, so um, board member um, Alto, I will bring that up at our next coordination meeting and, and, um, and convey those sentiments. Thanks. Anyone else? Anyone online? No? Thank you very much, Joy. Uh, we'll go back to agenda item number 16, heart report on dashboards. Nate is here. First of all, any anyone in person or online that wishes to comment? Nope. You're all yours, Nate. Thank you. I was wondering why Joey was running down the hallway. Mm -hmm. I know now. Um, sorry for being late. So I wanted to give an update on the heart report on the dashboards. Um, I was going to introduce Corey Ellis, the director of project controls, who you guys met on Tuesday. Unfortunately, told him to go to lunch about 15 minutes ago, so bad timing again. But um, one of Corey's top three to five priorities is try to land on what is a good executive level progress report for the board of directors. Um, I had suggested that it will most likely be some one-on-ones or some two-on-one -on -one meetings where we meet with the board members, try to gather some requirements on what you guys want to see, if there's anything new or above and beyond what we're doing, and then tailor that into a report. So now that we have a director of project controls on board, um, one of his immediate priorities is try to land on something that the board wants to use for that progress report. Unfortunately, that's my only update. He's on board now. Um, we can reach out and start scheduling those meetings at your guys' convenience, and we'll go from there. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Anyone? Okay. Thank you very much, Thank Nate. The next item is item number 18, a summary of board members' requests made during the October 20, 2023 Board of Directors meetings. Before we proceed to Lori, anyone here or online wishing to comment on this? Nope. Laurie? Chair, so um, board members, just make sure I captured everything from today's meeting on what we need to follow up on. So Art asked that the ethics um, come back again, um, be put back again on the January agenda. Um, 
uh, chair requested that at the next finance committee that Hart does the presentation on um, the amendments to FY24. Michelle asked for the priority table that last column be added and that I um, report on it every month at my executive update at the full board meeting. But Michelle uh, will also have it for your committee too um, uh, in two weeks. So we'll, we'll start there and then every month after that we'll put it on the full board. Um, on the heart succession planning so you talked to me prior you would like me to do um, look at that document that you prepared but also overall heart succession planning in including for my position so i'm hoping to have at least something for your next committee um chair you mentioned that you wanted actuals versus projections on the get and the tat so we'll have that for the next board meeting um and I, I got a little bit lost. I hope Nate understood what you, what you needed from him and Brent on the OSIP analysis. You, you're kind of clear what she wants? Yes. Okay. Okay, great. And then, um, Michelle, you also asked for the position description for Cindy's position. Um, and I did actually email that to you and, and Dan and, and Colleen um, when, when you oh, Lori, the session. Oh, yes. Thank, thank you for being so prompt on it. I can you um also do some research and send me um the salary that she was hired yes. at and her her changes in salary if there were yes. any oh okay and okay. and her progression in the salaries over the yeah. years yep yeah. we'll do. thank you and um that's all i have chair except for what nate provided that he'll start to set up the meetings with the board members on the on the i guess i have a correction my okay. request on the the uh, presentation to Robert's committee is not that you present. My question was, isn't the staff supposed to present that? Correct. So I'm not asking you to present. I'm asking you to do what I think you're supposed to do so that we get that. Okay, just so that we're clear. I don't want it to seem like it's, I'm asking you to do something new because it's not. It's it's your responsibility to do that. And we'll, we'll present it again to his committee because then you'll have to uh, approve and then the full board would have to approve it no no need oh no, this goes say? directly to the mayor no but that's 24. Right. Oh, the, the, yeah except for the board oh, okay so All nothing right. to do for 24. i thought you folks needed to approve that the amendment um we don't need the, the finance oh the amendment no, I was talking about the annual operating and the uh, uh, capital budget, which is. But that's 25. Right, right. But yes. Which is. No, but he did that. No, he did 24. No, no, he did the presentation at oh. the last board, at the last committee meeting. No, I did. 25, me and Brent tag team. 24, you did, because I had nothing prepared for that. Um, I, Yeah, I, I, I think. We could talk about it offline. Yeah, yeah. That's, that oh. wasn't the way I saw it. Yeah. I saw it as him doing it to us on explaining the 25th one, yeah. 20, uh, 25. There, yeah, yeah, there's certain items, but we could talk, yeah. um, talk about that offline. Okay. Anything else? Oh. Any other corrections or Sorry. comments? Oh, Chair, if I yes. may. Um, on the board rules, um, my understanding is that the uh, rule 12 that was passed is going to supersede and replace the existing rule 12 of the right. rules. Is that correct? Right. Okay, great. And we're going to renumber? No, that um, is the... Currently, they won't need to be renumbered because it's already rule 12 in the existing oh. rules. Um, so we'll do a resolution when we do the whole board packet, uh, rule packet, but um, I think we're clear on this one then. Thank you. Okay. I think uh, any other comments or questions on agenda item number 18? Yes, Chair, Natalie. Yes. Um, just a reminder that Nate was going to follow up. This was from the committee meeting, but it carried over to this meeting. My questions related to some numbers on the um, presentation for the change order for the controlled owner insurance policy. OSEP? Yeah, yes. he's, he's signaling that he he sees it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep. Well, Anthony says he mentioned it, so... Okay, anything else? If not, members, we are uh, at adjournment. So hearing no objections, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Hey, not bad, one o'clock. Yes, are we off? We're off.
Well, I'm seven o'clock.